RealAirCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. We're here for another episode of RealAirCulture.com's Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. Uh, once again, we're joined by Holly Gellick with BioVision Seed Labs. Welcome today, Holly. Good morning, Sean. Holly, today we are going to talk about ergot, uh, something that uh, we are hearing a much larger increased presence uh, this year in, the, in a lot of the samples. Uh, the Canadian Grain Commission is reporting that they're finding 20% of grain samples this year across Western Canada contain some form of ergot. Uh, I guess to start off, would that be higher? That, how much higher is that than normal? Well, that's significantly higher than normal. Typically, the Canadian Grain Commission announces every year what levels of ergot, as well as other downgrading factors, are out there, such as sprouting or green seed, etc. And a typical year would be in that five to six percent of the samples showing ergot content. Okay, so I, I guess why are we seeing so much more ergot this year? Well, I think the the big thing is to think about the disease cycle of ergot itself. So ergot, uh, the bodies itself, which are not sure if you've seen them before on your farm, Sean, but they are black. They are oblong in nature. If you cut them open, they are gray in the interior side of it. They're very large compared to a wheat or barley kernel, anywhere from two times to up to six times the size of it and very malformed. So the ergot bodies themselves, when they're sitting on top of the soil surface, uh, will germinate uh, and produce what's called ascospores that then go into the air and then infect the florets of wheat during its flowering flowering period. So typically we this year we saw a very wet soil conditions in that uh, June time period which caused these ergot bodies to germinate and disperse the spores. Uh, secondly, what we also saw this year is an extended flowering period due to cool conditions. So uh, a wheat plant, for instance, well, if it's hot and dry, it will shut down its flowering period very early. But what we saw this year was a cool period, and therefore it was flowering a, long, a longer period than typical. So for farmers that, uh, you know, a lot, for a lot of farmers that are dealing with this ergot issue this year, what does it mean? What, what, what are the, some of the things that, uh, the impact it's gonna have on, on some of the samples? Well, really, there's three different segments I would consider evaluating. One is the certified seed business. If you're a, cer a certified seed grower, uh, there's a specific level that is outlined by the Canada Seeds Act and the grade tables for allowable for certified number one, and that is one ergot body per kg. So typically in our lab here, we analyze physical purity in the fall of various types of cereal samples. And this year we've seen very high levels uh, on the seed side of the business. The highest sample we had this year was 80 ergot bodies in one kg of seed. So that's, that's very significant. It's by no means the norm. Um, we are seeing a lot in that 20, 30 ergot bodies per kg. But I would say the average is uh, 10 and less. So it still will impact a certified seed grower. If they can't get to that one per kg level, then uh, their seed is going to need to be demoted down to a lower pedigreed level. Okay, what, what about the grain farmer? What, what are his challenges? Well, his challenges would be grain, uh, basically grain grading. And there are certain pr uh, parameters that are set by the Canadian Grain Commission that benchmark whether it will fall into a number one, a number two, and then all the way down to a sample, which is the lowest level. A sample is below feed level. So there is a significant impact for producers this year that their samples could be downgraded. And obviously that puts less money in their pocket. And uh, finally, I think the third one was the feed industry. Yes, the feed industry is something that is very important to know. Uh, high levels of ergot affect not only swines, but also cattle. And really the symptoms that producers would see if there was high ergot levels is feed rejection. Uh, just loss of appetite and then followed with that would be just loss of weight. Uh, there has been some publications regarding swine that they can, it can also impact the hormone levels. So that could uh, impact the reproductive system of swine as well. Okay, so if, if I'm a, let's maybe say a commercial farmer, I, I'm a commercial farmer, I've got uh, ergot bodies in my grain sample, um, I'm worried about being downgraded, 
What are some of, are, do I have any options? There are some options. Uh, they tend to be, you know, expensive. So the first thing would be is to really benchmark where you're at. So get a sample graded, whether it be at an elevator or a laboratory like BioVision C Labs. We conduct grain grading here as well and find out what your ergot level is. The next step is to define, okay, what can I do? And the options are is seed cleaning. So that's through uh, typical cleaning uh, uh, mechanisms, such as a gravity table, which should be able to get some of the ergot bodies out. The second option, which is, is quite available in uh, specifically Alberta now, is color sorters. So there's a lot of municipal seed cleaning plants that have color sorters that can then remove the ergot based on its dark appearance and color. So really at the end of the day, there has to be a, a financial analysis whether the seed cleaning is the best option or sourcing other stocks. Holly, is, during the growing season, is there anything, you know, as we look forward, is there anything that a farmer can do in season to prevent ergot or is it just sort of a, you got it, you got it? Uh, part of it is you got it, you got it. <laughs> but there are some things you can do. Obviously your seed source is very important to know, you know, what, what level of pedigree and grade is your seed, how much ergot is in it. Uh, the ergot, if there's ergot in your seed that you buy, you plant it, the ergot body is only viable for one year. So, so keep that in mind. As long as it meets certified number one, I think you're relatively safe. Uh, if uh, there's another way that you get infection, that's through the grasslands that are the peripheral of your, seed, of your fields. Um, some agronomists mention, you know, cutting them down. But I, you know, with farming these days, I don't know if that's really a viable option. Uh, and then just keeping in mind that if you had ergot this year, there's a high potential you're going to have ergot again next year if you go back to back to a, say, a wheat or a barley. Okay. Okay, Holly, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you again uh, in the next episode. Great. Thank you, Sean.